me, your host, Sean Lynn, in the pub for a dram with friends where we talk about faith, family, food, and fun. Pull up a chair and I'll pour you a drink. Episode 40. We are very blessed to be joined by Ian Anderson in the pub today. And he talks about wanting to become a saint. Sit back as I pour us a dram. Welcome to another episode of A Dram with Friends. We are extremely excited to welcome old friend into the pub today, Ian Anderson. Welcome, Ian. It's great to be here, Sean. Thanks for having me. So in my in-depth uh, research into the Anderson name, uh, they're from the Speyside area. So I, I pulled out a, let's see if I can get the camera to focus, Abelauer 12 here, which is a, a very nice, easy sipping whiskey that uh, one can uh, enjoy at any time. There you go. Are you joining I did. Them? I I did some in-depth research as well, a.k.a. the local liquor store. Their Irish whiskey selection was abysmal. What? However, yeah, it was, it was actually, I, I, honestly, I would think it was probably, I would describe it as an embarrassment. There was nothing other than some just real standard, you know, Jameson original, and uh, there was like one other. Uh, it was just it was a, little, a little bit sad. So I, but they did have which I was kind of surprised because we're about, what, 3,500 kilometers apart right now. Yeah. Thereabouts, somewhere in that neighborhood. But they, they had a Canadian whiskey brew, uh, distilled right south of you in High River. Oh, okay. So I've oh. got the Centennial. Oh, wow. Right on. So the Canadian Centennial Rye Whiskey, so that's what I'll be having tonight. You'll have I saved it for this moment to see if we can get some of the audio of the... Oh, I don't there you go. Through. We'll have, we'll have to, you'll have to let me know how that is because I don't have a bottle of that yet. You know, it's a, uh, it's a favorite of some friends of mine in the Calgary area. And so uh, even just buying it felt like uh, getting back together with old friends. So I was like, well, that's perfect. There you go. That's, and uh, if, it's perfect for that. If I recall my uh, time working the floods here in Calgary, down at Eau Claire Market, there's a, sign that says Ottawa 2,878 kilometers away so <laughs> okay there you go around 3,000 yeah, then yeah yeah I I remember it because it's my badge number so <laughs> <laughs> there you go so for for our friends in the audience uh, or in the pub who is Ian Anderson yeah I've heard you ask that question I was like man that's a loaded one who is Ian Anderson I tell you, if you figure it out, you tell me. Um, but I'm, I guess I'm a man on a, on a mission to be a saint as best I can. Um, I'm a, a missionary with Catholic Christian Outreach, currently Human Resources Director. Um, but that's my, that's my mission, but it's also just you know, my job. My vocation, I'm a married man to a beautiful wife, Samantha. Uh, we've got two beautiful daughters, our second daughter, uh, was born just on January 1st, so what a way to ring in the new year. That was uh, pretty awesome. And uh, our sec our first daughter is just uh, just about to turn oh, right three. So. Yes, I, I got the postcard uh, last week with the the pictures. Uh, thank you very much and congratulations. Yeah, and you're welcome. Yes, uh, life life keeps going no matter what's happening in the world, right? So. It's true. It was a surreal, surreal experience on many levels, but uh, I won't give you all the, all the details, but everything's weird these days. It's a little different no experience. Doubt. For sure. and, uh, so did you always want to be a saint growing up or was that, uh, or a missionary? <laughs> you know, that's an interesting one. Um, my mom was really good about having um, like just Catholic stuff all around a lot of Catholic books and I I love to read and uh, she had I don't even know 
probably through some family friends, got connected to uh, a couple of really good authors that wrote great historical fiction with saints oh, wow. as the main characters. So pretty early on, I was inspired. Um, I was uh, so far from being ready to really start the journey towards sainthood, but I was attracted to Do it. Do you from remember an any of those titles for the parents out there? Yeah, um, so some of the authors... Some of them weren't necessarily explicitly about saints, but they had some really good stuff. Um, Rosemary Sutcliffe uh, was just good historical fiction that often has the faith kind of creeping into it in, in ways that are very natural and just sort of drip it in. Um, yeah, in a way that's not like right in your face. Um, the uh, Thomas B. Costain, uh, when they're a little bit older, I was kind of in my early teens when I was reading that. Um, the other one is going to escape me now. Man, he's got some good stuff. A Quiet Light about St. Thomas Aquinas, Set All Afire by yeah, Louis DeWall. Louis DeWall. Right here is, on the uh, shelf, I was just looking. Uh, yeah, he's got some really, he does a great job with that. Captures the, the, the essence of the saint, but like as a human being, so you feel like you could see. relate to him, you know? There you go. Yeah, Lay Siege to Heaven. I think I read that one. Always got to be prepared in the pub. <laughs> you never know what somebody's going to talk. There you go. Well, well stocked <laughs> library in the pub. That's uh, for when everybody waxes That's philosophical right. and you need That's to settle right. the argument. You can go to the original <laughs> sources. So, how long have you been with CCO? Uh, it's hard to believe, but I am beginning my 11th year. No, I am almost done my 11th year. Um, so starting my trying to remember when we first met, it was through CCO and, uh, yeah, likely 2014 when I moved to Calgary, I would imagine I was aware of the God squad conference before that, but I was out in Vancouver, so I didn't get a chance to, to come on over for it. And I think um, you I think brought a group of guys over to volunteer at, uh, And uh, yeah. if, I, if memory serves me correct, was yeah. it Curtis Martin at the at the conference? Because you know, for you, I've got to remember which was the first one. I think yeah. it might have been Curtis. Yeah, there you the go. The first one for me, I think it might have been Curtis. Asking to yeah. borrow the barbecue trailer to welcome students at the yeah. Help with the outreach on yeah. campus. Yeah, yeah that, that was really successful. Get back to that again. Yeah. Students love the free food. It, it never hurts to have yeah. a shiny barbecue. It, it gets lots of young men's attention, and uh, then you can talk about Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and the the smell of uh, of a good barbecue happening is it just yeah. brings people from all corners of the campus. Yeah, I, you know, I they're think we're sniffing definitely... out the free food. I know we're going to have a job ahead of us re-evangelizing our population uh, and trying to help them figure out life after COVID. So, Oh, yeah. There's going to be... Uh, it's kind of driven a wedge, I think, in a way. You know, um, highlighted a lot of... Um, just a lot of areas where we've all maybe uh, been a little slack in our faith and the, the pandemic is, has kind of put a, a spotlight on that. And yeah. so people will be ready to either, I mean, it's the battle, right? Good and evil. So people will be ready to either just fully walk away or take a closer look and try to fix those gaps, those areas that they didn't but realize you, you, you they need to take a closer uh, look at. There's some bright spots out there. Like I was just looking last night at, the podcast top 100 on on apple podcast and uh for 2021 the bible in a year is number 14 right behind ben shapiro <laughs> and ahead and ahead of joe rogan so i knew you were you gonna know, bring that one up yeah so people have this hunger and we need to 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 tap into that Absolutely. Like we're seeing that in our ministry on campuses. 
um, record numbers. Wow. We've, we had record numbers this past year while doing most of our ministry online. That's un unbelievable. You you know to it on one hand, but on the other, what else have people got to lean on right now? You can only binge. Yep. You can only binge Netflix for Absolutely. so long before you start wondering if there's more to life. <laughs> yeah. So then we try to be there. Try to be and there. We so all try to be there. What is your when elevator pitch? Ask that question. Uh, you know? That you you recommend for for the guys out there that maybe aren't as comfortable talking to people. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting one. Uh, so if, if talking to people and kind of getting into it isn't your thing, uh, live your life as eloquently as possible. Like that's the, the preach yeah. the gospel at all times when necessary, use words, <laughs> pseudo quote, you know, it's, uh, nobody ever actually said that, but there's some truth to it. You know, when you live your life in a compelling way, um, it's attractive and it starts, it invites questions. So I would start, start there, but also I would say, you know, guys like just challenge yourself a little bit, ask a, ask a question that makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, but is a little more meaningful than the usual, like, did you watch the game on Saturday? Um, I, I mean, the pub is a great context for a conversation like that, because usually the conversation goes far and wide. But if there's an opportunity, you know, guys say, let's say a guy, a guy's complaining about work or, or difficult times at home or in the family, yeah. offer to pray. Like say, hey, can I pray for you? I'll, or I'll say a prayer for you. You know, uh, show your hand a little bit. Like people can't have start a conversation if you're just like, I'm just like everybody else. You know, we're, we're called to be uh, a light to the nations. We're called to follow Jesus, who was a, a sign that would be contradicted, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging to be a Catholic man uh, in a meaningful way. So, yes, you know, there's we got to ease ourselves into it, but also we can't, if, uh, it's can't a, hide behind. If it was a battle, it yeah, sign yeah. Me up. Uh, but uh, and and that's what people don't understand is it is a battle for souls and and. We just uh, celebrated Pentecost Sunday uh, at the time of this recording, and and we're in the red, ready to go out, right? To, and we're in the red the, here. The, that Great Commission: <laughs> Go and baptize all nations. That's right. He, he yeah. didn't say, "Yeah, do do a couple over there and a couple over there." He kind of wanted to see this grow. Be yeah, yeah, and uh, and then yeah, the, the blow the Spirit. doors off the Jeff, thing. Jeff Gibbons talks about all yeah. we have to do is is speak that word, and then the Holy Spirit does the work because we 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 know that it's not us that are going to convert people. Amen. It's, yeah. it's the Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, so I'm I'm quite interested yeah. to see what the Holy Spirit's going to be doing here. <laughs> Oh man, he's he's active. You, you know that he's always at work. So it, it'll be interesting. I mean, it's been interesting. Like we've seen. I mean, I, I'm sure lots of people listening have have seen unique, li maybe little things, uh, little opportunities to pray more because you know we're staying at home. Um, little opportunities to reach out to people a little bit more and uh, and be in touch. Um, and the kind of conversations that might open up from uh, you know. Absolutely, and just lots of opportunity where the holy spirit's at work. get out there and do it basically uh, like god squad we've we've added prayers on our on our web page so that if you're not comfortable maybe praying alone you you got a, a bunch of guys in the pub praying with you so if, if you want to imagine that yeah. and uh so it, we're i'm working <laughs> on uh compiling the rosary yeah. right now so that you can pray along men praying the rosary with you. So I've found it very helpful for myself just uh, doing the litany of St. Joseph or the the uh, chaplet of divine mercy. Just It doesn't take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is you're listening. And I think that's why that Bible in a year is doing so well, where 
it's an onerous task to pick up that Bible every day and and read it, but you're doing it with a bunch of people. You're not alone. Yeah. Yeah, and a great thing with a lot of those prayers, too, is they give you a language. Like, if you don't know how to pray, and you're like, I don't know, Lord, what <laughs> what kind of words do I use in this? Gives you something to say. You say it often enough, and it starts to sink in a little bit. You might find yourself in a situation where you're like, uh, you know, that litany of St. Joseph's got some great stuff. If you're ever finding yourself in a pinch, and, uh, and you just need to cry out to St. Joseph, terror of demons, you know, pray for me. <laughs> yeah, and I've then, got the uh, image. It's a little sideways you know, here on the wall there. I don't know. But uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great one when I'm working the street going into a dark place. <laughs> I got St. Joseph, yeah. Terror of Demons, and St. Michael on, on, on my side. Uh, there's nowhere I can't go. <laughs> yeah, right. what do you got to fear, so, right? And I love it. You talked about yeah. being a saint and help help the audience understand like that that we're all called to be that. If if you want to go to heaven, yeah, you go there as a saint. Yeah. I think the the intimidation factor of saint, you know, really is 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 a shame because like you see the people with the title and then you start reading their biography and maybe you only get like the two paragraph version of their biography and you're like, well, pff, that seems unattainable, right? Um, but at the end of the day, being a saint is being holy. Being holy is being like Jesus. And Jesus gave us the church, the sacraments, his very self to help us become like him. So it's not really about my effort as much as it is about following his lead. So for anybody out there who's feeling like, man, becoming a saint seems way too hard, um, my strong recommendation is just go to Jesus. Um, don't worry about becoming a saint. Don't worry about making yourself a saint. Um, go to Jesus find out more about him, find out more about what he has to say about you, because you'll find out he loves you quite a bit <laughs> and, uh, and has a great plan for your life. So don't put, uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself to get to the end game. Start with where you're at and start looking at Jesus and let him, let him take you one step at a time. And that's, that's just it. it. It's a journey. And when you were talking, uh, uh, old song came to mind uh, by Bob Carlyle and it's the saints are the sinners that fall down and get back up again and I love that one yeah it it just p says the truth right we we're yeah. all sinners and the church has so much opportunity and encouragement for us to get back up again <laughs> yeah just that is the the devil's going to try to kick you while you're yeah. down He's going to try to say, he loves to do his little game of like, this over here is really attractive. This is what's going to really make you happy. And then as soon as you go that way, he goes, yeah, you're a loser. You know, and then he, and he like makes fun of you, mocks you, makes you feel like garbage. But um, I forget where I was going to land that. Uh, what did you just say, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> It was building off what you yeah, said, but I forget about the, 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 the tools of the church to help us get back up again. Yeah. And, get back up, getting back up yeah. again, exactly. The last thing he wants you to do is get back yeah. up again. Whereas Jesus doesn't care how many times you've fallen. He fell three times on the way to Calvary, kept on getting back up. Um, he talks about, you know, don't forgive your brother seven times, forgive him 70 times, seven times. Which is... He's always ready to bring you back up Which on your feet. Which is like infinity and beyond is what the... <laughs> exactly. That's the imagery. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, and that's that's where it's exciting. And So as a young dad, do you have a specialty that you, you make for your wife and kids? Or do you do much cooking? Or Yeah, we, we, we share the load. Um, Samantha is a, is a genius when it comes to meal planning and, and, uh, and getting the, the stuff in the house to have a variety of things ready to hand and just ready for a lot of different meals to happen. 
but um, I love cooking. I mean, stir fries you know, on a basic basic day if you're if you're just like we need to get dinner on the table quick. And um, but I mean, barbecuing of course is especially yep. this time of year. You got the barbecue out. We've already done more than our weight in burgers, I think, and a couple of steaks and. Got a buddy down the street who uh, smokes oh, his own meat, so I, I feel like I'm pretty pretty set there here for go. the summer. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I was I was laying flooring in my house, and I had a, a thought for uh, possibility for new segments. Uh, so if if you were a tool in the Lord's hand, what power tool would you be? <laughs> Well, maybe not power, power tool, tool, whatever what tool mean. you want to be. <laughs> okay, tool. tool. Well, it's interesting. Um, let's see here. I think in all, like, in all honesty, I'd probably be a bit of a Swiss Army knife. Can do, do a little bit of everything and do it pretty well. None of it like the best you've ever seen. <laughs> That's, that seems to be how the Lord has used me. He's, uh, I've had the opportunity to serve in a lot of different areas within... Uh, the ministry I'm a part of. Um, I tend to be a bit of a, a chameleon who can talk with almost anybody. Even an old guy um, in the pub. So I feel like, yeah, even an old guy in the pub, you know, over, over there uh, you the go. <laughs> Well, we're definitely going to have to have you in the pub when you guys come out west again. I'm sure you're going to try Looking and do forward that to in, it. The, in the next year, hopefully. And That's the plan, yeah. Well, there's a there's a wedding coming up that I'm uh, I'm hoping hoping I might be able to make it out for there. I think we yeah, it's a mutual friend. You're but, you're, um, you're hoping we'll that they allow more than ten people and. Uh... That's it. You know, I could be in the parking lot looking in the window, but they, uh, you know, I might get you might have to come in and drag me out of <laughs> well, there. Well, it, it's actually <laughs> looking. Uh... Promising, I think. Uh, Jason Kenny tweeted about having a, a good summer, so we'll we'll see. The numbers are coming down. Uh, we're coming to the end of May, as we participated on Sunday in the prayer to end the pandemic that the Pope Francis has asked, uh, and it was Canada's turn, so we wanted to represent. So we were out at the church praying to end to this thing because God's go. the only one that's going to be able to put an end to it. So, Oh yeah. 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 We do all, all that we can and then uh, rely on grace and what we do is relying on what we can do is still relying on grace. So it's all yeah. grace in the end. So yeah. a lot of young men are struggling with what a man is. What advice do you give your 18 year old self? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, well, so like the 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 uh, campy answer or the cute answer is, I feel like I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. So <laughs> I wouldn't tell myself my 18 year old self too many things, but I think there's a few. There's a few things I would say. Um, don't take for granted. Um, the time that you have. I think when I was 18, just like a lot of 18 year olds, you feel like you're going to live forever and uh, all opportunities will always be open to you forever. Um, and, and I guess with that, to, to get, you know, ask the Lord and get serious about where he might be calling you with, with your life. Um, and talk to older guys who can teach you uh, what it means to be a man. Um, you know, put yourself around guys you respect, guys who are living the kind of life you hope to have when you're, you know, their age and, and learn from them. I think I spent way too much time thinking I knew better, which typical yeah. teenager, you know, uh, and I took a long time to realize that this life is better when you work at it than if you just wing it. Um, you know, there's a lot to, a lot to experience, a lot to explore. I'm definitely not saying like uh, buckle down and, and don't take in the beauty of yeah. God's world that he's created here. Definitely get out there and see things, experience things. You've got an opportunity while you're young. But also, yeah, be ready. 
be ready and open and, and seeking what God might have as a mission for you and do what you can to be ready for that mission. And you bring up an interesting point because I can't tell you how many young people that I've worked with over the years tell tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and unfortunately, there are so many out there that don't take opportunities of wisdom. Whether you use it or not, just accept what somebody's saying. Because they're usually saying it out of hope that it'll help you. And uh, Totally. Yeah. So one of the other segments is uh, Jeff Givens talks about riding with your posse. So who are your, your go-to saints? Who are the, the ones that you, mm. you walk with on a regular basis? So for a good majority of my life as a committed Catholic, I would definitely say St. Francis Xavier has been my number one guy. Um, his fire, his athleticism, you know, a lot, lot of uh, um, just passion and zeal and, and willingness to go, you know, to the outer limits. It was really, he always really inspired me and he's somebody that continues to inspire me. He's my confirmation saint. Um, John Paul II, uh, near and dear to many of our, our hearts and his words and, and his fatherly care uh, in his life on this earth and um, as a powerful intercessor since. Um, but I would say currently, uh, calm, I'm sure you're, uh, you're familiar with this fella, uh, St. Joseph, um, has been our number one guy for the last couple of years. Our family has been on the move a fair bit. so. And recently, we were blessed to, to be able to, to purchase a home here in, uh, in Ottawa in the midst of a very chaotic <laughs> real estate market. Uh, so he's, he's been keeping an eye out for us, and we, we invoke his intercession regularly. Yeah, I can't think of a better guy to uh, help you on your journey. What was funny yeah. was uh, we, in 2000, the Great Jubilee, we took a big family holiday uh, out towards Ottawa and Montreal. We were going to St. Joseph's Oratory for and beyond. And uh, kids, this is back when you had maps that you, you, yeah. you looked on. And uh, Trips are so much more fun with an actual map. So it was, and at times there, there was some, we got lost or, or it was, it was amazing. How many places are St. Joseph Boulevard, St. Joseph Church, mm. St. Joseph Lake, mm. St. Joseph Hospital? He, he mm. seemed to be there every time we we, we got lost. Every time you turn yeah. around. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's, a, he's a, a good guide for your journey. Uh, yeah, definitely. And we live we live uh, two blocks away from St. Joseph Boulevard. There you so. go. Yes, is that the one that goes like across the river into Quebec, or is that? Uh, no, St. Joseph is uh, in the east end of Ottawa and uh, kind of cuts east west. Uh, I don't think it goes over. Pretty sure it turns into one of the uh, one of the highways. I remember it that being yeah. one of the roads where we ended up. In Gatineau, and then found our way back because St. Joseph Bull. Maybe it was a sign for St. Joseph Boulevard. <laughs> that could be, <laughs> that, yeah, uh, yeah. Brought us back, so. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So, although I gotta, yeah. No, no, it's it's off, off topic. topic. <laughs> that happens in the pub sometimes. It happens. So, it does. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but the Gaelic word for whiskey is Ishkabaha, which means water of life. And my prayer is that you continue to lead many souls to the true water of life on your journey. And I want to thank you for being in the pub today and joining us and allowing me to be part of your journey. Absolute pleasure, Sean. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of A Dram with Friends. Like and subscribe. Go to all podcast platforms to look for it on podcast. 
or go to godsquad.ca to support our mission.